Hello my friends and uh, what a joy to do this kind of videos. Videos with stars. Well, uh, she's a star even though I have to admit I never knew who she is. China McLean. If this name tells you something, then uh, I know that you're gonna come and you're gonna comment here on this channel. You will say your opinion about what she did. The fact that uh, she boldly shared the gospel with people boldly speaks about Jesus is something to be commended more and more celebrities they start giving their life to Christ now why is that maybe because they realize that money cannot fill their life with joy money fame power all these kind of things uh, they do not fill you they do not give you the joy the peace the inner peace that we're all looking for they have all this, they have uh, the admiration of people, they have uh, a gang of fans popping up from everywhere, but this doesn't make them happy. You see them, so many of them, the overall majority of these stars, they are broken. They live ugly lives. They don't know what the true love is. They change partners all the time. They're empty inside. They try things of this world again and again and uh, they never satisfied why, why is that well because we created with an emptiness in our heart that only jesus can fill and that's what you see as well in this video china woke up at 2 3 a.m in the morning and uh, the reason why she woke up was to share this message about god about god She's concerned about people uh, not uh, believing, but our part. Obviously, China will not watch this video, but uh, let's uh, let's straighten this up. It's not our business what people are believing or not. Our business is to share. The rest God is doing. Let's take a look at what she says, and then we'll comment some more. Let's take a look had a long conversation with family. There were some really powerful things that were talked about and that were said. And I, they have stayed with me. And I, I can't sleep. And I think it's because I'm supposed to shoot this and share these things with you guys. I have recently a lot, especially on TikTok. Whenever I mention God, I hear kids like, I, I need more proof. Like, you can't just expect people to believe something for no reason. Like, where's the proof? Like, you know, you're going to ignore scientific evidence and, and all of these things that go against God being real. And I don't really know where that came from. I don't know who told them that science has disproved God's existence. But that's not the truth. Scientists may tell you that God is not real, but science doesn't tell us that. Science actually tells us the opposite, lines up with the existence of a creator, a being higher than us that created these things around us. and. I gave an example that I'm going to share with you all, and I need you to bear with me. I'm going to tell you a little secret. This building that I'm in right now, before I go home, I spoke to the owner of it. And he told me something that he told me not to share, but I'm going to anyway with you guys. He informed me that this building that I'm in right now built itself. Now, I know it sounds crazy. But it's the truth and you should believe it. They left the land alone for like over a hundred years. Came back to the whole building built, but no one built it. Do you believe me? You don't? Why? Have you ever met the builder of this building? Have you ever seen the builder of this building? with your eyes, you know their name? Have you ever come in contact, even somebody you know that's met the builder of the building I'm in right now? Do you even know what building I'm in right now? 
what state I'm in, where I'm at. None of those things. You don't know any of those things, yet you believe that someone built this building. Why? Is it because the building exists and you know buildings don't build themselves? That's enough proof for you to believe that someone built this building? You're right. It's logical thinking that buildings don't build themselves. And for this building to exist, someone or something had to build it, whether it was man, woman, child, machine, or something else. Something built this building. If we came across a bunch of abandoned paintings at a junkyard somewhere, what's the first question we would ask ourselves? We'd be like, who painted these paintings? We wouldn't ask ourselves, mm, I wonder if someone or something painted these paintings. No, the paintings are there. We wouldn't, that wouldn't even cross our mind. The first thing our mind would jump to is who painted the paintings? Because paintings don't paint themselves. So if a building is proof of a builder and a painting is proof of a painter and them existing, their existence is all the proof you need to know that there was a builder and a painter, why is creation not proof of a creator for a lot of people in their minds? Why does that not click in the same way? Why is the existence of water and trees and birds and, and lions and tigers and bears and us humans, why is the existence of us not proof enough when we cannot create any of these things. Doesn't matter how many genius scientists you put in one room and you say, hey, we'll give you as long as you need. We need you to create one drop of water, just one. No, you can't get water that already exists and then, you know, work from there, work on that foundation. No, go from zero, nothing to one drop of water. How long you need? You could leave those scientists to theorize and experiment until they all die. And you get a new generation in there to continue their work. It's not gonna matter. You're gonna come back to a bunch of failed experiments, theories, and no water. Because we're not creators. We don't create things. We can't give life. I've heard um, some kids say, well, my parents created me. My mom created me. <laughs> and they did the act that, yeah, they had sex, which made your mom pregnant. But when I get pregnant, am I putting my little baby's bones together in my stomach? Am I forming their toes and their fingers and creating their brains and giving them eyeballs? over these nine months that I'm carrying them? Am I doing all of that? Mm, surely not. Surely not, because I couldn't. It's more about what I don't do to mess up the process that matters. Don't smoke, don't drink, don't do drugs, you know. Don't do things that's gonna danger the life that is developing inside of me. And the development of life is exactly the most important part of the conversation that I'm having with you guys tonight. Science is not separate from God. It's not God or science, no. Science is the explanation of God's creation or at least the little part that science understands about it. We've come a long way, you know, over the years when it comes to scientific knowledge, but <laughs> for everything we know or think we know, there's countless other things that we don't. I'm more interested in why this system exists and who, who created it. Because something did, we didn't, we can't. We can just study it. Science is, is knowledge, it is, but but knowledge of what is the most important question. 
the knowledge of creation. So I want to step further into what that means. Because it seems like science there, when it comes to certain scientists, science doesn't stop there, but certain scientists stop and they're just like, oh, well, those questions, you know, we don't want to ask those questions. Well, we should. Because the answer to those questions is what's holding the meaning of life and the peace that so many people are looking for in life. It holds so many spiritual answers, so many answers to so many questions that we have spiritually. When we only focus on our logical minds and what our logical minds tell us, but we turn off our spiritual intellect so that they're not working in tandem because they're supposed to. You're only going off of what your logical mind tells you, things that you have seen, things that you've been told. Only that, without this, it will blind you to so many things around you. And when I say spiritual intellect, I'm gonna give you a quick example and then I'm going to be quiet before I wake my family up. Say you're driving down the road and it's late, it's like now, when I'm filming this like three o'clock in the morning. And so there aren't a lot of people on the road, but you come to a red light at some point. So you stop, you wait, you wait for cars. There might be one or two cars that pass in front of you, but then the light turns green. You don't see or hear anyone, lights green, really no one around. What does your logical mind tell you to do? It tells you to go, right? Don't go past the speed limit, but go ahead and go at a good pace through that light. So that's what you start to do. But you get a feeling all of a sudden, a strong feeling to not race through the light at your normal pace, but to creep, go slowly. And because this feeling is so strong, for some unexplained reason, you listen to it over your logical mind that's telling you there's nobody around you don't see or hear anything that's dangerous go but you listen to that feeling so you creep and just as you're creeping out this huge truck just boom plows through and passes right in front of your car they ran the red light and if you had gone at your normal pace like your logical mind was telling you to do You'd have been right in the path of that truck. You sitting there like, I am so happy. I listened to that feeling. That's that spiritual intellect. People call it intuition. Like it comes from us, but we can't give ourselves knowledge that we didn't have a second ago. Like, do you understand how thermonuclear astrophysics works? No, I don't either. Can you explain it to yourself real quick? Can you teach it to yourself so that you can teach me? Because I'm curious. We can't tell, teach ourselves things that we don't know. We, we need somebody to teach us. God is my teacher. That's how I'm able to sit here and tell you guys these things. I don't know these things until I say them most of the time. Because he gives me the knowledge because I'm supposed to tell you. He's real. That spiritual intellect is important. Up against your, your logical mind, it just saved your life. When what your logical mind was telling you off of things that it's learned, it heard from observations and whatever, whatever it's taken in through your life, it it had gotten you killed or, or seriously injured. God loves us, all of us. Doesn't matter what we've been through. Doesn't matter how we're currently living our lives. No one's better than the other. No one's worse off than the other. No, we're, we're all human and we're all struggling every day with something, something. We're all in the same boat. None of us are in the position to be judging each other. The only human being that has ever walked the face of this earth that has been better, that has been good, is Jesus. But it's not about a religion. I'm not telling y'all, hey, join a religion, Christian up. Come on. I'm not telling you to do that. It's not about that. That relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, that personal relationship that church can't give you, another person can't give you. You have to make a decision to go and seek that out with God. 
is spend that time, you know, just listening and getting connected, learning who he is, because you can't learn who he is and not love him. God is real. I'm telling you, God is real. I have no reason to lie about it. The choice comes in as to whether or not you want to get to know him. You know, whether you want to build a relationship with him through through his son, through Jesus. It's, it's That's your choice. And nobody can take it away from you and nobody can force it on you. It's your choice and your choice alone. Hopefully I didn't wake anybody up, but I'm going to go ahead and go. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. There are definitely great rewards for those that understand that uh, if you know Jesus, you need to live as you know Jesus. That doesn't involve perfection, but that involves repentance every single day. We still are very much aware of our humanity as followers of Christ and we make mistakes still as we are already, <laughs> we are already free from the dominion of sin and death, but we're still uh, connected to the flesh, isn't it? We still have uh, this uh, human nature very much. The human nature that Apostle Paul is talking about. Woe to me, who's gonna deliver me from this body of death? Apostle Paul is saying because he saw the duality. You want to do good? But still your flesh is fighting against your desire to do good. That's why we need the Holy Spirit, friends. Something that unbelievers don't know, don't realize it. They can't understand it unless God himself will open their mind and heart and will explain to them. Thank you, China McLean, for what you're doing. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And um, if uh, you think this video had any value, we're going to post here uh, this picture of her Instagram because I took this video from her Instagram, so I want you guys who you are not aware about who she is to see. So this is her Instagram account. She has a big following, as you see. And you people on this channel, maybe you can take a look and see what's all about on her Instagram page. Thank you again for watching and God bless you.